wasn't long ago. America was awkward and clumsy. Its machines slipped and slid in a maze of belts and pulleys. It was a nation driven by horse and water power. And then came electric power. As inventors found new ways to use electricity, they were confronted with new problems. Electrical currents behaved in mysterious, unpredictable ways. While electric power was in its infancy, a hunchback German immigrant arrived in America. A dwarf who stood scarcely more than four feet tall, but who cast the shadow of a giant before him. The young immigrant brought with him one important tool, the science of mathematics. He began calculating basic laws of electrical behavior. His shadow stretched out to reach the future. His rock sound theory began to form the foundation of all electrical invention. His mind became a spur to accelerate change, to lighten the burdens of all men. German city of Breslau, near the border of Poland. Charles Proteus Steinmetz was born here a century ago, on April 9, 1865. He was deformed from birth, a third generation hunchback. Extraordinarily inquisitive, perhaps blessed already with the divine discontent which would make him grow to be a giant among men. Breslau, the University, 1882. At Breslau, Steinmetz was driven by forces within him, studying, absorbing, taking more than was given. He was obsessed with theoretical physics, chemistry, economics, medicine and especially with higher mathematics and the study of what was then a primitive form of electrical engineering. Steinmetz, 24 years old, America. I'm very satisfied to have come here where a reasonable man can live reasonably and succeed. Nobody interferes with your freedom, and one has the entire Sunday for oneself. Steinmetz finally found employment with the firm of Eichmeier and Osterheld, manufacturers of hat-making machinery. Rudolf Eichmeier, also a German immigrant, he was willing to try the talents of a hunchback dwarf in ill health. After eight months as a draftsman, Steinmetz began to apply his mathematical knowledge to the improvement of motors, and he was placed in charge of the firm's laboratory. His legacy to all of mankind, the notebook, began to fill with the shorthand of genius. And the genius spilled out onto the pages of Electrical Engineer magazine. There was fundamental knowledge, words and figures, the basis for a thousand inventions. Steinmetz, perched on a stool like some fantastic bird, had formulated the law of hysteresis, the basic explanation of magnetic behavior. He had made possible the invention of efficient and dependable electric motors. As Steinmetz was developing his law of hysteresis, Two rival companies announced a merger. 
Edison Electric, and Thompson Houston. Combined, they formed the General Electric Company. Shortly after, the new company purchased Eichmeier and Osterheld and obtained a great asset, the monumental curiosity and genius of Charles Proteus Steinmetz. And so Steinmetz moved to upstate New York, where the Schenectady works of the young electrical company had some 20 buildings and 5,000 employees. Steinmetz, Schenectady. He lived here for 30 years and helped make a little New York village into one of the great electrical manufacturing centers of the world. Steinmetz first took an apartment near his work. With the tree-shaded streets lined with 17th century Dutch homes, recalled the memories of the old country. He made friends, and soon a bachelor's circle of dedicated young electrical engineers set up a more elaborate residence. It was natural for his friends to bring their fascinating problems to Steinmetz for discussion and solution. At the General Electric Works, Steinmetz was officially made consulting engineer, a position he held throughout the rest of his life. He was called the Supreme Court, and important new ideas from within his rapidly growing company were sent to be tried against his logic and knowledge. There was the judgment of Steinmetz implicit in nearly every innovation introduced by his company. He was 29 years old. His understanding of the science of mathematics was augmented by a growing knowledge of electrical behavior. He worked far into the night on complex problems, obsessed and absorbed with his calculations, happily curious. In 1894, Steinmetz achieved another great triumph, a staggering achievement in complicated mathematical computation. He devised a formula to measure the forces of alternating current. achievement was so monumental that others could not understand what he had done. Very few believed that his theory would work. And so, Steinmetz suggested that alternating current be transmitted over the 26-mile power line from Niagara Falls to Buffalo, an unprecedented test to prove his theory. At the same time, a major portion of the young electrical industry was fighting vigorously for the establishment of direct current. Steinmetz and alternating current won out in this first full-scale harnessing of the falls, and the controversy ended. Steinmetz was believed. The line had worked, but it took volumes simply to explain his theory fully so that others could understand it. The contribution. Mathematics which showed the way to the efficient use of electric power. Steinmetz was a prolific writer and inventor. More than 200 patents were taken out in his name. And while he was finding intellectual fulfillment, he was building a full, if strange and legendary life in his community. After he had lived in Schenectady for six years, Steinmetz built this house, and alongside it, General Electric constructed for him a two-story laboratory. Here, a young technician, Joseph Leroy Hayden helped with experiments, and a warm friendship sprang up. When Hayden married, Steinmetz missed him deeply. The long hours of complete absorption in their work, the mutual curiosity and understanding. So, Steinmetz invited Mr. and Mrs. Hayden to live with him in his large house. Soon after, Steinmetz adopted Joseph Hayden as his legal son. And from that time on, the third generation hunchback had a healthy and happy family of his own. Steinmetz loved unordinary things too, perhaps because of his deformity. 
His bizarre collection startled the people of Schenectady. And quickly a number of legends grew about the eccentric electrical wizard. He was fascinated with photography and the things he could capture with a camera. With a group of friends, he designed a flying machine. And the remarkable machine was constructed in 1894. But it got off the ground only in trick photographs Steinmetz made. But above all, the electrical genius lived to work and to influence the work of others. Union College. He taught here for 10 years. Union conferred upon Steinmetz the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. And Steinmetz conferred upon his students the great beginnings of wisdom. Perhaps the greatness of the man is reflected in the stature of the people who visited and consulted with him. Lord Kelvin, British physicist, famous for his absolute temperature scale. Henry Ford, who had an electrical problem with headlamps for his Model T. Guillermo Marconi, pioneer of the wireless radio. Professor Albert Einstein, whose theory of relativity Dr. Steinmetz published in a somewhat popular style. Another electrical genius and contemporary of Steinmetz. Steinmetz could never separate his private life from his work. At his camp on the Mohawk River, he spent many hours studying new electrical problems and at the camp began a chain of extraordinary events. Dr. Steinmetz, come quickly. Something's happened to the camp. Emil, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Quick, get me the camera. I want to photograph every detail. Look here, the lightning struck the tree where it divided into two forks. One passed through the ground here, the other must have entered the camp through the extension cord and discharged onto the silvered back of the looking glass. With this glass we can calculate the electric charge. And so Steinmetz began research into lightning. Systematic investigation started in 1907 and culminated in 1921 with dramatic experiments. In 1922, man-made lightning was demonstrated to the press and an interested and distinguished guest, Thomas Edison. Our lightning generator gives us a discharge of 10,000 amperes at over 100,000 volts. This explosive effect of real lightning will help us develop better lightning arresters and insulators that will safeguard buildings and electrical power lines. Man-made lightning. The man. Charles Proteus Steinmetz. The drama of the lightning experiments introduced the little electrical wizard to the people of America. And the people gave him a title, the Thunderer. The man who made lightning, in the laboratory and in the minds of men. I envy the young men of today, for although the engineer has infinitely more competition, 
he has infinitely more opportunities. And what is true of electrical engineering is equally true of every other field of human endeavor. If I were to bequeath to every young man one virtue, I would give him the spirit of divine discontent. October 26, 1923. The electrical wizard of Schenectady is dead. Charles Proteus Steinmetz, 1865-1923. His legacy? An understanding of magnetics for electric motors. An understanding of alternating current so that power can reach the motors. An understanding of lightning so that we can defend against it and keep the motors running. The mathematical foundation for continuing experiments with greater currents and larger equipment. Calculations which are basic to every student of electricity. Calculations which are used in the design of today's complex power equipment. Charles Proteus Steinmetz extended man's ability to use electricity. And he extended the dignity of man. Yeah. 